Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about these AC adapters with the barrel connectors on the ends of them. Now chances are you probably got a bucket or a bin of these somewhere around your house and when you lose one you go rummaging through that bin and you realize there's a whole bunch of symbols and numbers on the back of it and you need to know what those mean. I mean, you plug in the wrong one, are you going to blow up the thing you're trying to plug in? Are you going to blow up the adapter itself? What do all these numbers and symbols mean? So I'm going to focus on four of them. Remember, there are four that are going to be really important for us here today. And I'll summarize them right now, and then we'll go and explain each one and know what numbers to look for. So you got to be careful with the voltage, the current, the polarity, and the barrel size. I'll start with that last one, the barrel size. That's usually pretty intuitive because if it fits and slides into whatever you're plugging it into easily, you've got the right barrel size. There's some ways around that, but that's the easiest one. Now onto those numbers and symbols, voltage, current, and the symbol for polarity. Let's check those out. So the first of those numbers is the voltage. Now voltage in an electrical circuit is like pressure, remember. So if you put in too much pressure into something, it's going to explode. Put in too much pressure into a balloon, it's gonna pop. Your circuits are the same way. You need to know exactly what voltage you're supposed to supply to the device, otherwise you're going to damage the device. So we check out the device and I see on the back right next to the connector it says 12 volts DC. So I know that I need to find a power supply that is exactly 12 volts. Now voltage is pretty precise. Too little voltage and I'm not going to run the device. Too much voltage and I'm probably going to damage the device. So of all of these numbers, the first one and the most important so far is the voltage. Make sure that it matches exactly. Now, if you don't know what the voltage is of this, you probably want to think twice before using it. If you're just hanging on to these things but you don't know anything about them, probably safest just to throw the thing away. The next really important number that we need to know is the current or the number of amps. Now you'll see that listed two different ways. More often with these AC power supplies, you're gonna see it listed with a lowercase m capital case A. That's MA, milliamps. So if it says a thousand milliamps, that's the same as one amp. So it could also be listed with just a capital A, which is amps. Now, this is the amount of electricity that can flow into something. So if we say that that's the amount of electricity that it is, this thing is capable of providing, like here's one that you can see, I've hacked this one in the past, uh, but this one says DC 12 volts, so I had a 12 volt adapter, it says 1000 milliamps. So this one is capable of providing one amp. That means that it would work for something that only needs half of an amp or 500 milliamps. It doesn't mean that this is going to shove a thousand milliamps through my device. The shoving part or the forcing part comes from the voltage. Don't force too much voltage. On the other hand, it's better to choose a power supply that is capable of providing more current. So voltage, we want to have an exact match. With current, we want to be able to provide at least but preferably more current coming from the supply than what this needs. So it says it needs 1.2 amps. I would probably try and find one that can do at least 1.2 or maybe 1.5 or 2 amps would even be better. If I find one that is smaller, so let's say that I found one, this one says 1000 milliamps. Let's say that I plug that one on and it can only provide one amp, but it needs to supply 1.2 amps. So in that case, I run the risk of this thing overheating and potentially burning up. It's probably not the device that's going to suffer, although it would shut down if the AC adapter broke, but more likely the problem is this is going to be damaged. Now we have to be careful there because you might try that and find out that it works great. You plug the device in and it works well when I've only got one thing plugged into this. Then days or weeks later, as I start plugging in more and more devices into this switch, it uses more and more electricity and more current until all of a sudden I'm using too much and the AC adapter fails. A majority of the power supplies these days are what they call center positive. 
If you look really closely at these barrels, which is why they sometimes call these barrel connectors, these barrels have a bare metal outside and then a little usually black but sometimes colored plastic sleeve and then inside there's a separate metal sleeve inside. So those are separate from each other. Every circuit, DC at least, um, but three phases different, but DC circuits need two wires to complete it. Electricity to go out to the thing and electricity to come back from the thing. Usually the inside, which is harder to get to, is the positive voltage. The outside is ground and everything else is ground, so if you touch the outside, no big deal. The inside is where the electricity positive is supplied, so they call that center positive. So here's what those two symbols look like, and we don't want to get this wrong. Like I said, center positive is the majority of them these days, and you'll see a symbol where it so shows an outer shell, and the inside of that is connected to a dot with a plus, center positive. Now this one is center negative. You can choose the right voltage, you can choose the right current, but if you connect the battery terminals backwards, like in a car, you're going to do some serious damage. One final step here, just so that we know how to test these, so that we know what we're dealing with. I showed you this one that I had hacked earlier, and the point of that was I needed this end, but I needed this connector, which had the wrong end. So I cut the two wires and I spliced them together using a set of DIN rail connectors, these terminal blocks. When I got them connected, I knew that I had a center positive connection and that's what I needed for the end, but I wanted to be sure that I hadn't accidentally switched around the wires. So here's a trick that we can use using a multimeter, a voltmeter, to make sure that we've got it correct. So I plugged in the device. I plugged it into a power strip and I'm going to set my voltmeter to DC volts. I have my end connector and I want it to be and assume that it is center positive if I did the wiring correctly. So I stick one end, the positive end, the red end of the multimeter into the center of the barrel connector. To the outside, I'm going to press the other COM connector and check my voltmeter. And the voltmeter says 12.63 volts. Now actually the fact that this one is a 12 volt adapter and shows a little over 12, that's okay because as I load it down, as I connect it to something, it will drop that voltage down to probably something pretty close to 12 volts, exactly. So that means that I did my wiring correctly. Now, if I had gotten it wrong and I meant for it to be center positive, but I had accidentally switched the wires, what I would see with the red in the center and the black on the outside, what I would see is a negative 12.63. So with the red in the center, a positive number means center positive. If it's negative, then that means that the center is actually negative or I've made a center negative adapter. You want to be careful if you're going to go splicing your own wires, but it does go to show that you can connect them. There's nothing unique or special about one adapter to the other as long as you've chosen the right one and all of the properties are correct. So that's the scoop on these AC adapters. We need to make sure that the voltage is correct, the current is more than we need, the polarity is correct, and that the barrel size will actually allow us to plug it in. As long as those four things are met, we should be able to make some use out of that old bin of power supplies that you got laying around. So with this knowledge, hopefully this allows you to go build some cool stuff, maybe break a few things, and go build something awesome.